Hi everybody, I wanted to take you through a full end-to-end -end process uh, using both S4 and the Reba uh, Guided Buying and the Reba Network. So let's uh, have a look at a bit of a story here. So parts, materials and services may be required and uh, our character here, Emma, wants to, to do that. So she's going to actually go in and actually use our Guided Buying solution to, to buy what she needs to buy to do her job and uh, get those parts and everything else to the right people at the right time. So we're going to take a look at the system here and she's going to go straight into guided buying via the, uh, the Fury Launchpad of course in S4 and do a search for what parts and uh, uh, things that she actually needs. So of course you could uh, search in many different ways by using our, our catalogs here uh, going into those different areas. Um, again both uh, parts for direct materials, services, everything's all part of this. Uh, we can search in many different ways uh, if you search a little bit incorrectly, like I did there, it may go to different types of catalogs, whether they be company catalogs or parts, or whether they be also our uh, external catalogs as well. One of the nice things in guided buying is obviously not only does it look fantastic, uh, but we can actually select different items like I have here and actually compare all those items together. And again, regardless of what these items are, they can be pretty much anything we want. I can then take a look at these items. I can have a look at what's going on. I can make sure I've got the right SAP part number and things like that, as in material number um, it, and also the manufacturer's part number in here too, which is really kind of handy. Have a look at the price and those types of things and compare those three items that I just selected all together. So we can actually then see, you know, what's the difference between them, what's the price. I'm going to choose this one here because it's uh, pretty uh, inexpensive and it's given me what I need. So therefore I go to my checkout and then obviously send request is going to generate that purchase requisition both in here and also in our S4 solution. Now that's really important because obviously S4 being the core uh, component for this, what it's going to do obviously is it's going to say, hey, uh, this one happens to be over the uh, the allowed limit, so therefore it needs to be approved. But let's go and take a look at that request because it's really important to actually have a look at this and see what's going on with it in terms of the S4 part. So again, here we can see the approval, which is required. It's all good, we're going to do that in a sec. But really importantly, we can see the cost center and GL code, sorry, that it's actually posting to, so apologies, uh, the GL code. Uh, but here, and this is really important, we can actually see the, um, the purchase requisition inside S4. So that's the purchase rec that's actually gone from guided buying directly into S4 so that we can actually see it in there and, and start using it in the S4 system. So that's just wanted to really point that out because it's, uh, it's obviously the, uh, part of this. If you want to, you can change it and all that kind of stuff in here too, but we've, we've finished with the ordering process. Now, Emma, if she wants to, she can go and actually take a look at those purchase requisitions. She can see all of her purchase requisitions and we can see what status they're in and whether a purchase order has been created yet. Uh, for everything in, in this one solution. So she's got everything in that one place. Now, the next part of this, of course, is our friend Ben. We saw that the, uh, the, the purchase requisition needed to be approved. Now, there's a bunch of different ways we can run this, uh, this approval. Uh, you can actually do it inside guided buying, uh, and you can also do it in S4. So depending on if it's a casual user that doesn't really use the ERP, you could actually do it in, in guided buying if you want to. But uh, in this case, yeah, we're going to take it through an automatic workflow, and the approval can be done inside S4 as well. So you've got a bunch of different options here about how you want to do it but the important point is we try and make it as easy and as simple for those users that are actually using the solution as possible so here's ben i've changed the uh, the screen a little bit here to make it kind of clear that i'm a, I'm a different user uh, so we can see obviously ben's photo in the right hand side here and we can see that ben's got uh, a couple of different notifications going on you can do this via the inbox which is uh, what, what we can see here and i'll show you that in just a second we can also do it via our notifications too so these notifications are, of course, automatic, kind of like what you get on your mobile phone, uh, popping up and say, hey, you need to do something here. Uh, and of course, it's basic. We can see some of the basic text here. Uh, this request has come from Memo Ward, what it is. And I can actually click on the approve button here uh, or obviously reject it, depending on what I want to do, uh, which is uh, really neat and very easy. And again, you can do this on your phone if you want to. I'm using a browser here, of course, but it's all the same kind of thing. Now, 
If I wanted to do that via my inbox, and I want to be annoyed with notifications, or I want to see more information about what's actually going on, for instance, it may well be that uh, I want to take a look at what's going on. I've actually got some purchase order uh, approvals here. So just to be clear, again, this one is looking at these materials. Again, it doesn't matter if it's a material, uh, a direct material, indirect material, anything else, we can still go through these types of approval processes if I want to. In this case, it's actually raw material that's been purchased. So this could have actually been uh, come from from MRP or anything else. Uh, but I'm just pointing out the different ways in which we can approve. Uh, and in this case, it's actually a purchase order, not a purchase requisition. So it may have actually come from somewhere else. And again, we have that flexibility and the ability to, to have these different approvals at different points and different times within here. So I can click on approve here. I can add my note. So yet yeah, happy with that. I understand what it's for. Click on submit and life's good. So just a couple of different ways of really doing very similar things, one for a purchase rec, one for a purchase order. Now back to um, back to Emma again, and she can either check her purchase requisitions if she wanted to using S4 by just going into uh, my purchase requisitions, which you saw a few moments ago. But really interesting here, if I just go back into guided buying, you'll start to see the interaction between the core ERP and guided buying actually working together. So if we go into requests here, because this has now been approved, uh, if I go back into the requisition, what we'll start to see is a couple of things. First of all, um, we can see it's been ordered because it now has a purchase order against it. And if I uh, look at everything else in here, but if I scroll down to the bottom, uh, keep going down, what we'll be able to see here is, yes, it was approved. Very good. Nice work. Uh, keep going down. We see it's been ordered. What we get to, and the really important part here, is here is our purchase order number. And that purchase order number, of course, is in S4. So the both systems are synced together to allow us to see exactly what's going on. If I was just using guided buying, I could still see it was a purchase order number. So I could call my vendor and say, here's my purchase order. If I was using S4, it's in there too. And we'll see this in S4 in a few moments when we come to check everything out at the end of this uh, process. Of course, I can go into it here if I wanted to. So let's have a look at the last part, and this is where the, well, second to last part, I guess, is where the vendor can now collaborate with this. So the vendor can confirm the order, they can uh, allow us to see what's going on, they can do a ship notification and things like that. And let's have a look at what that looks like from the vendor point of view. So here we have the vendor's uh, view of the world from a portal point of view and they can see everything um, around all their orders and everything else they need and I can see I've got eight new orders coming through here and of course one of those will be the order we've just created because of course it just flows through to the Ariba network so just to, uh, when this comes up we can see our order end, uh, ended in uh, 074 so that's our order there because we just had a look at that a few moments ago in guided buying it's new sorry I'm in the way here um, so let's take a look at that and what can we do with it? Well, we can do a few different things. Obviously, we can take a look at it. We can see those those, those material numbers that we had in S4 and everything else. Um, we can see coming through when does it need to be uh, sent and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I can now do a bunch of things. Now, it's important to understand that the rules within the Ariba network control these buttons for the vendor, which controls the process, and that's what we call our business rules. Uh, we might not need an order confirmation. We might not need a ship notification. We might not have that create invoice button there because we might need to have a goods receipt before we can create an invoice and things like that. So we can control how we interact with the vendor, and that's a really important point here. So let's uh, let's confirm that order for uh, for this particular item and I can put in my confirmation codes in here and anything else I wanted to put in around uh, when I expect it to, to be shipped and uh, everything else uh, any costs that are responsible for uh, uh, relevant for that uh, I can check it out once I've done it and I can finally hit submit to send that through um, back to the core solution so that would now update our, um, our SAP solution to say hey you know, it's on its way it's confirmed uh, life's good and I can check it out now as a vendor what I can do also is you'll see here uh, obviously it's gone down from um, seven sorry, eight to seven excuse me um, so what else can I do to this? I can actually send, oh, I can also see it's missing from the list, I should point out too, yeah, of course, because it's gone down from eight to seven. So let's uh, let's go and take a look at what else we can do with, with this. We can actually now um, send 
things like an advanced shipping notification. So here's my order now, I can, I can see it here. Let's have a look at the next stage of this. You know, I want to create the ASN, as it's known, or advanced shipping notification. Uh, I can add different um, elements in here around what is the ASN number. I can add uh, different shipping dates. I can add all those types of things in here. Uh, I could even add the carrier if I want to, you know, who's actually carrying. And then you have the tracking data com coming from that carrier uh, as part of that update. I can add uh, identification codes, weights, uh, all those kinds of things, even seal numbers if we want to, as in the, the, how it's sealed. Uh, supplier batch number, production dates, expiry dates. And while this is all important is because, of course, when we go to do the goods receipt at the end of this with uh, with the, um, the receipt of that item, all that information is carried into the goods receipt. So the user, when they're doing the receipt, doesn't have to enter the expiry date, the batch number and everything else. The system already knows all about that. So it's got all that data, which is great. So that, you know, you think about that, you know, when you're doing the goods receipt of the item, everything's already in there. We're not having to, you know, we can just scan it straight in and just take that. We're not having to enter or fat finger data into the system, it's already there. The last stage of this, I'm just gonna cr quickly create this invoice. This probably wouldn't normally happen in this sequence, um, because we'd probably do the goods receipt first, but while I'm here as a, as a, um, as a vendor in the portal, I just wanted to show this. Of course, we could do this quickly by just entering the value and submitting it. But what we can also do here is actually um, fix things and change them. You'll notice this is actually in US dollars. So that's going to cause an issue for us later, which we'll, we'll check out. But uh, we can add different uh, discount rates and everything else in here. Um, I can change values and all that kind of stuff. I could fix things up here if I wanted to. And finally, obviously, just go next and uh, take a look at what I've done and then submit this out. And that what that will do now is obviously send that invoice back to the core solution. And that's that's the really the important part here is that is again going back to S4 for the invoice creation. Uh, so let's go back to our character Emma. Emma wants to um, just check everything's okay. Uh, and I, I'm actually gonna show you a bit of a goods receipt process here, even though we're not actually gonna post it, but I'm just gonna show you that in here um, as part of this process, just to kind of finish it off. So what we're gonna do is check out everything's happened, everything's okay in the solution, and uh, life's good, basically. So what I'm gonna do here just quickly is, um, the reason I'm gonna show this is just to show you how a purchase order gets goods receipted in the system. You don't always need to do this if it's a consumable item or an item that um, doesn't require uh, stock values and things like that. We don't need to do a, a goods receipt. Um, it's, oops, let's get rid of that. Um, it, it's entirely up to us, depending on the item that, that's coming through, whether it's a material, or a direct material or non-direct, indirect material. So here I can just post the goods receipt and say, yes, that's now posted into stock and all those things. But what I really want to show here and what's really important is this purchase order number we can see here. So you saw that being created initially via guided buying. It's flown through the Ariba network, but of course it's still here in S4 as well. And um, that's really the important part, the, the system all working together all the way across this, um, this solution here. So uh, if I want to, I can go down and see more information about it, uh, confirmations, all that kind of stuff, any requisitions that started the process in the first place. I can see material groups and, you know, so direct materials, you can see everything in here. Um, and ultimately, I can also see the invoice number as well, of course, because we posted that invoice in the, the network. Um, and if I need to, I can dive down into that invoice and I can start taking a bit of a look at it. Now, the sharp eyed of you will notice that it's saying with errors there because when it posted it, I didn't change it to Australian dollars. Uh, so that's why it uh, is actually coming through in uh, a bit of an error there. But of course, we can fix that up, <clears throat> change it from um, American dollars. And that's why there's a bit of a difference in here, variance from the supplier. Uh, but we can fix that as part of the next process when it comes to clearing uh, that invoice out, which of course is a finance process. Now, if I'd been clever, of course, I would have set my rules up in the Ariba network not to allow that to happen. And if there was a variance, it should have sent that straight back to the vendor. But in this particular case, I haven't. So Emma's pretty happy. She can check it out. She can see that uh, everything's got okay, but I might need to call accounting about that uh, invoice issue, that everything in there is all good um, from a process point of view. So that was just a summary, uh, really quick run through of you know how do we get something from S4 into the Ariba guided buying uh, uh, back into S4 again because of course the purchase order is generated there after its uh, after its approval 
through the Reba network and then finally back to S4 just to see the whole chain from start to finish all the way through. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I will talk to you all soon on my next video. Thank you. Bye.